Hey guys, what is going on? It's kind of here again. So today we're going to be unwrapping this model. Now, one of my subscribers sent me a message. Um, they couldn't quite understand how the previous UV in tutorial would work on an object such as this, which is kind of a high dense um, triangular uh, mesh. And obviously it's a pair of teeth. Um, we've got the gums here and we've got the teeth. Now, the principles in that video work exactly the same. Um, but he just couldn't figure out, so I thought I would do a tutorial on this, just showing how easy it actually is. So what I've got so far is just a material with a checker pattern on, and as you can see, it's all orange. Now, when we render out this, you can see it's kind of a blue, and we've got some really weird artifacts in, and that's because the UVs on this model are absolutely in shambles. So what we need to do is fix this. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a tool um, which requires you to be in the line mode and it's U for Eunice and M for Mum, so it's U, M. And if you bring up the U menu and look for the M, which in this case is, I can't really show you, but it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, the 11th one down um, called Path Selection. Now, this is a really, really fantastic tool, and how it works is, um, when you go over a point, it highlights. You can then click and drag to whichever line you want, and it will basically s select that line. However, it only selects when you go to the next um, vertice. So, as you can see here, this is highlighted. So, what we can do is we can go around this entire model by actually just highlighting these edges. Now because this model is very artifacty, um, which means you know there's, there's a lot of triangles, you can see when we go to this angle we, we get a lot of artifacts and stuff because of the shading, because of the thong shading. Uh, so keep that in mind. Now just like the other tools, if you want to get rid of a line you just use control to get rid of that line and then you can hold shift to add to the selection. And this is just a really, really fast way, instead of using loop selection, which sometimes isn't accurate, especially on something like this, it's just very, very nice to use this um, to just select what we need to select. So I don't need that. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to rip off the top of the mouth. So what I'm going to end up doing is coming down the back as well, something like this and having a look and at the minute we can't really see anything because of the teeth are in the way and um, luckily on this model there is actually groups that allow you to hide the teeth so we can actually see a lot better so we're just going to continue this around here and bring it all the way across and pretty much just finish up the other end and I think something like that looks pretty damn good. Um, so if you can imagine this being flattened out, this section and the back section will be one part of the actual mouth. Now it's impossible to unwrap these all without having seams because seams are a big part of it. So you want to put the seams somewhere where are really going to be affected. So now that we've got that um, top part, we want the, um, the under part, if you like, so the underneath. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this around here and pretty much just roughly cut around where I want the seams to be for the underneath of the mouth. And as you can see, it's very, very simple to do this. Um, in a matter of seconds, we actually um, did a complete cut around there. So that's also going to be unwrapped. Now, we don't actually have to make any more cuts because this section here, which is the front of the gums, will already be um, cut off from the bottom and the top. So in theory, it's its own section anyways now. So what we want to do is we want to go into the UVing tool. So go up here to Layout and go into the BP UV Edit. Now what we want to do is select the Polygon UV tool, which is this one over here indicated by the checkerboard. And we want to grab the Live Selection tool and use Control A to select all of these. Now what we want to do is we want to go down to Projection and we want to use a Frontal Projection. I like to go into a top view and I like to press H to frame this and then project it from the, the top view. And 
when we go into our actual um, perspective viewpoint, you can see these look fantastic. However, the vertical polygons are all stretched, but underneath they're pretty nice and tidy and, and even for the most part, except for over here. So what do we need to do now? We need to cut this apart in order for it to um, be accurately um, UV'd. And that's where the relaxed UV tool comes in handy. Because what we're going to do is we're going to use the lines that we have selected in order to tell Cinema 4D that's where we want you to cut the actual UVs um, in the UV space. It's not actually going to cut the mesh, it's just the UVs, which is a representation of the mesh, but 2D. So, we're just going to have these settings as is, which basically means pin to, um, to neighbours. We're going to have realign, um, LSCM, and we want cut selected edges. You can also use a tag if you want, um, but where we've got the edges already selected, so we can just use cut um, selected edges. And then we're going to hit apply. So that's going to do two things for us right here. Um, we're going to get a stray point here by the looks of it, and that's down here. And that's obviously part of this section here. So we just kind of need to figure out why that, just that one broke away. Uh, we'll come to that. But what we want to do is basically even out these. And you can see they're pretty well preserved. You know, they're evened out. You can see we get some stretching here on the front. And that's because of um, this section here. And we can try and um, straighten this out by grabbing um, all of these polygons here by using Alt and clicking. And we're also going to grab this one here. And we're going to try relax this on its own. So we're going to hit this one and we're going to see if we get any better results. We're going to change it to ABF and try again. And we're not, we don't seem to be getting any better results from that. So let's um, turn off auto realign and we kind of just need to play with the settings because there's no particular setting to get this right. So we're going to use pin borders and try and nothing's really happening. Now this is one of the problems with um, you know the Cinema 4D UV tools. They aren't the greatest. They, you don't have the greatest flexibility. So what I found um, works quite well is if we go to projection mode and use shrink instead and then go to relax and we can basically relax it again and we get a much straighter um, piece of um, UV in mesh which you know it, it does help um, it definitely helps a lot and to straighten this out manually would be quite difficult so you can see the edges are now straighter and they're obviously quite even um, I'm gonna leave that as is actually I'm probably just gonna scale it up a tiny bit more and move it into position and then what we need to do is basically grab the top and bottom and rescale them to match the size so from here they look very similar I may just increase it a little bit trying to grab these edges and you could move them in the UV space to try and line up these squares and I'm looking at this square right here right now so I want to make it a little bit bigger in the UV space to make it smaller in the perspective and I think that looks okay I'm not gonna get it perfect but you know something uh, relatively equal is, is what you're trying to aim for so again for the underneath um, these look you know relatively good um, I'll just scale them up a tiny bit like so and that looks okay now you might be wondering why the under part of the mouth is a lot smaller and the top is a lot bigger well they're just different sizes um, we basically cut out this section here whereas the top is this whole section and the back that's why it's a lot bigger um, so don't worry if, if the size in the UV are different what your goal is is to have them equally spaced as squares um, in your actual viewport because that's what matters. Um, as you can see, we've got some stretching here, but um, you know the relaxing tools inside Cinema 4D are particularly great. Um, 
If you do want to unwrap something organically, like a mouth or a character, then you're best using something like Headish UV Layout, which I've already done a tutorial on because the algorithm in that application actually smooths out and evens out the actual polygon dis distribution, which basically just makes it a lot even, um, so more even squares. Um, I'm less stretching in your textures, but for Cinema 4D, it's not too bad. I do wish there was plugins for um, the UV tools just to enhance them, but unfortunately I can't find any. Um, but that's pretty much what you would do with this section here. Now, if you want to create a map so you can paint on this, then you, you've got a few options. You can do it inside of um, Body Paint 3D, which I'm probably going to do a tutorial on soon. Um, or you could just go to File, New Texture, uh, make a new texture, and then what you could do is go to Layer and Create UV Mesh Layer, and that's basically going to hi highlight these. Um, let's make a new layer here first, then just go to Layer, Create Outlines. It would help if you had the polygon selected. Um, that's kind of an important thing. Um, mm, why is it not working? Maybe I'm missing something here. Um, we'll just go to outline polygons instead. Um, it, it's just the same thing. And then you would just right click this, go to texture and save texture and you save it on your desktop. And then whatever you paint on this um, this texture, it will apply over here. Um, so let's just go back to the standard setup. And I wanna show you the tooth because it, it's exactly the same. Um, but I'm, I'm sure he will appreciate me showing him how to do a tooth as well. Um, so I'm going to hide the um, mouth or the gum area and unhide the tooth. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the polygon selection tool, grab this. I'm going to go up to the selection tools and rip off that menu. And then I'm going to basically grow this selection. And I'm going to grow it a multiple of times just so I have every bit of this selected. And the reason I'm doing this is because it's just going to make it a lot easier. So I'm going to go down here to set selection and um, I want to create basically a selection of this. Um, and it, it won't do it if I've got this one highlighted. So make sure you, you are off that and then create a, um, a selection from that. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to hide this selection. In fact, we've actually made a boo-boo there. Uh, so I'm just going to go Control-Z and I'll explain why. And Okay, it should be enough. So because this was selected, it's going to override this one. So we want to make sure we click off that first and then hit Set Selection. And then when we hide this one, we can bring back the a tooth that we had basically and this looks okay so what I'm gonna do um, one thing if you see this clipping a uh, viewport clipping it means you need to reduce the viewport clipping size so press ctrl D and you'll bring up your uh, project properties and down here at view clipping just put it to tiny and you'll be able to see your object so like we did before we're gonna select the edge and we're gonna use U UM and we're just going to go around this very roughly and make all of these selections. We're going to go to the back of the tooth where no one's going to see it. Um, it's going to be inside the mouth. And then we're just going to hold shift and make a new selection all the way down here into the mouth. And then when we are here, we're going to cut off the bottom of the tooth as well. So around here. I'm just doing it rough right now, but you would spend a lot more time. And of course, if your mesh was laid out correctly in the first place, um, you wouldn't really have an issue with this. Uh, I think I'll go up there and around. Something like that. So now that we've got that done, again, we're just going to go into the... Uh, fix this section first, actually. And there we go. Um, so I'm going to go into the BPUV edit window and again I'm just going to go into projection um, and make sure I've got all the polygons here um, selected and then I'm going to go to um, frontal something like this which is fine and then I'm going to go to relax and just relax these out so 
if we get some weird results, it means the cuts weren't particularly great. Um, but let's just try separate these and see what's happening. So that's the top, great. Um, this complicated part here is obviously the bottom. And this section here is the actual uh, tooth. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically rotate this round to match it up. And depending on how much detail you want on this, you would scale this up, which in turn would make these smaller and have it like that. And then for the top, we're going to basically select all these and we're going to uh, scale these down, of course, to match. And again, you can rotate these to match as well and put them in position. And for the other ones, I mean, that's a little bit off, but I just want to kind of quickly go through this because I don't want to take more of your time. Um, and then again, use all and just select all these areas, which gets really laggy um, because of just how many polygons and stuff there is here. And again, just go down here and we want to um, scale this section here. Um, something like so. And we can move this in position. And that is pretty much what we would have. So we can go back to the standard style and we can basically unhide everything. So we'll unhide the rest of the teeth and the mouth. And this is what you're left with. Um, a relatively decent UV object. The squares are pretty square. Not much stretching. Uh, if something is severely stretched, you could, in theory, go in uh, in point mode and just adjust the UV so there's not much stretching. But overall, that looks pretty good. And to check its um, decency, really, we can just go to the color channel. And we can load up something like a, a, a brick preset or something like that. Um, and we can just go in and reduce this to maybe um, two. And throw this on this object. And then what we can do is render this out. And you can see kind of how it works. Um, the squares look all square or at least rectangle because this is a brick of course. Um, you can see the orientation of where these are going. Um, it flows around very nicely and um, if we just do a close-up and maybe an underneath like here you can see um, we get some really nice results this is orientated in the way we want and you know that the tooth looks pretty good you can't really see the seam um, especially if this was one color with some maybe um, yellow and um, discoloration in the texture um, you know it looks pretty cool um, so overall, the UV looks pretty decent, and I mean that is pretty much how you would just um, UV it. It's not difficult; it just takes time, especially when you have so many teeth. Um, one thing I would suggest is um, basically separating the teeth and the gums, and the way you would do that is you would just restore the selection, duplicate it, and you would just delete these. And then you would go to point mode and just optimize it. And then you would do the same on the top layer. You would restore the gums. Uh, let's go to polygons, restore, and then just delete that. And then go to points and optimize. And then what you have there is technically two pieces of um, you know sections. You've got the teeth and you've got the gums. So that's pretty much what you would do. And then that way your gums would have its own texture space and all your teeth would have its own texture space. It just makes it a lot easier than having all of the textures in one UV space. I mean, you could do it that way, there's no problem, but depending on how much detail you want to put in, it will be obviously very limited depending on the size of the map and how much space you have. Um, but that's pretty much it, so I hope this helped you out. And if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget to rate the video and share it with your friends and subscribe if you're not a subscriber. So I'll catch you guys next time.